All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for everybody joining us live. For anybody watching this on a replay, thank you as well for spending the time with us. Uh, this is uh, Webolution's webinar series, Strategies for Turning Website Visitors into Sales Leads. My name is Mike Hanbury. I'm Director of Business Development here at Webolutions, and uh, with me as always is my colleague, Jack Schneider. Say hello to the folks, Jack. Hey, hello to the folks, Jack. That's my favorite part of the webinar. Thank you, Jack, for playing along. Uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, strategies for turning website visitors uh, into leads, and uh, we are uh, just going to go right ahead on into it. First, uh, uh, the first thing uh, that we would like to do is just give you a little bit of background about Webolutions. Uh, we are a 25-year-old website and digital marketing company. The industry itself is right at 25 years old. It is not possible to have been doing what we do longer uh, than, we've, than we've been doing it. Uh, the focus today uh, is about website conversion, and so uh, the accolades and stuff that I mentioned here uh, are our focus there. We are uh, all that stuff is true uh, that uh, that is mentioned there, and that uh, those clutch.co nominations. One of those is hot off the presses as of this week. Uh, the, uh, that the leading B2B uh, uh, marketing firm, that is recognition that we learned last week uh, that we had received uh, and, uh, and that it was okay to talk about uh, as of this week, and so we're talking about it. Uh, and thank you, for, uh, thank you again for, for joining us. Uh, but we help passionate people thrive. That is our purpose. That's why we're here. That's why we do the webinars, why we do everything that we do. I want to thank all of you passionate people for joining us uh, today. This is about me. Uh, so we'll be very brief here. Uh, it has not changed uh, uh, since uh, our, our last webinar, since we started doing these. Uh, and uh, I, I started here in Web at Webolutions in 2010. I had a different role. Uh, I've been in the director of business development role for a little over two years now, coming up on two and a half. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. I get to talk to a lot of interesting people. The format today uh, that I've used is uh, heavily, uh, borrows a lot from an ebook that we offer, uh, and uh, and in our uh, email following up from this webinar, we'll, can, we'll offer a, a, a link to down, uh, download it, uh, seven tips for high performance web, for creating a high performance website. Uh, we do borrow from that. Uh, that book uh, goes more deeply into things that are outside the scope of this webinar, uh, like search engine optimization and how to attract more visitors uh, to your website. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that today, but it's really more about uh, converting the, web, uh, the visitors that you that you get. Although it is important to know that in order uh, to convert visitors uh, to sales leads, you need visitors. So, uh, and uh, the higher the volume, uh, the higher the volume, better. Uh, and uh, we've got some other things that are in our history in our uh, uh, in our, uh, our, uh, our catalog of webinars uh, where we uh, do uh, focus uh, more heavily on that. Uh, and uh, we will, uh, and you'll get a link to those as well, and be able to watch as many of them as many times as you'd like. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, without uh, further ado uh, on that, ah, if you have questions, I want to invite everybody to a little housekeeping here. Please send questions via the chat, uh, and Jack's going to help me. He's going to uh, process those, and we have uh, certain points during the presentation where we're going to pause and address uh, your questions. Uh, and if we get questions that we don't have time for uh, that are really good. We'll include those, uh, Jack, in the follow-up, okay? Uh, uh, questions and answers for those. And uh, uh, you can always call me. Uh, that uh, we, uh, it says around the bottom, we offer free website analysis, and, uh, and that's one of the things that we do. Uh, it really is a no uh, obligation, no frills, or no, uh, uh, no, uh, 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 it's a no obligation deal. You need some help, you call me, okay? 303-300-2640 uh, is our number here at Webolutions. Ah, okay. Uh, so, uh, get me, getting a high performance website. So, we're going to start here. Uh, some of these bullet points are uh, addressed in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the ebook, uh, and then I deviated. The more I revised the presentation, the more I deviated from them. You know. So, uh, but uh, here are some. We're going to define our website goals. We'll talk about this. This is one of those fundamental things that just kind of gets skipped when you plan a new website. Uh, what do we need it to do? There are strategic goals that the business or the organization, if you're a nonprofit, I know we have some nonprofits uh, with us today, uh, uh, all of this stuff applies to you, I promise. Uh, if uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, What is the goal for your website? What do you need it to do? You've got the strategic goals you've identified for the business, revenue, sales, whatever. Now, the website's supposed to help you get that, right? What's, what's its role? All right, what, does, uh, what do you need the website to do? Uh, what's uh, uh, mastering your message? We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about making it easy 
or your website visitor, all right? Uh, the right technology. Uh, and even as I sit here, there's a thing that I wanted to make sure to talk about that I didn't include in the presentation. Jack, if you would, please, don't let me end the webinar without talking about form fields, okay? okay. Form fields, all right? Uh, and uh, so we won't be uh, visually represented, but I will talk about that. Uh, and uh, the right technology and the right systems uh, to support that technology. These are the things uh, that we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about defining your website goals. If you uh, have uh, joined us in the past for, uh, uh, for anything, you've probably seen my friend up here, uh, and I like him for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I like that marketing superhero uh, crest, and, uh, and he's just uh, he's a uh, uh, he's a guy with some goals, man, uh, and uh, and he's getting after it. So uh, you probably see uh, you probably see him again. I uh, uh, he and I have a have a good relationship. I like that uh, I like that guy. Uh, so, but we we but here are some website goals. Uh, a, a list of uh, of things that uh, uh, that you might want your website to do. Uh, you might want it to uh, score on Google Page One. Now, that's an objective; it's a means to an end. The reason that you want your website to score on Page One for a relevant term uh, is, uh, is is so you can get those visitors that you can turn into leads. But it's definitely something that uh, uh, that uh, people identify as a goal for the website. Uh, you want to provide easy access to information. You either want to do leads or capture uh, uh, or, or capture sales if it's an e-commerce website, uh, directly sales. Uh, you want to uh, uh, stand out, thought leadership. Uh, all of these things are things that you might find at a goal uh, of your website. And uh, and I might ask you as we go through this, or as you listen to the uh, listen to the content of the webinar, you know, a good thing to do is to have uh, on your phone or on a second screen there, uh, have a uh, have have your website pulled up and look at it honestly and say, you know, have we uh, have we done this? Uh, is this uh, is this an opportunity area for us? Uh, do we uh, uh, on all these on all these points? Uh, but these are uh, goals that uh, that you might have. You might have different goals uh, for your website. But it's important to say here's what we want the website to do, and that goal should be tied to, as I say, a an overarching strategic goal for the company or organization. We need to sign up this many new members. We need to move this many people through our program. We need to make this much in revenue. Something right. Uh, so uh, uh, so let's uh, let's define that. Uh, that's the thing that gets that, that gets skipped. Um, here's a question that just came in. I'll pause to take it. Uh, how much does a website cost? As you might imagine, this is everybody's favorite question. And the cynical answer to that is, how long is a rope? Uh, uh, the uh, uh, a uh, the it's a fair question. It's one that you have to ask. <clears throat> but all by itself, it's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, marketing and every your know, website and everything that you do for your marketing, including your website, is an investment. Good investments generate returns. You manage the investment to generate a return, and your website's going to act exactly like that. There's going to be no difference between that approach and a capital investment you make in your business for a new piece of machinery uh, or a, a, a stock you might buy in your personal portfolio. There's going to be no difference, okay? You treat it the same way. Uh, the uh, uh, if you look at your website as a cost item, that's all it's ever going to be, uh, and uh, um, uh, that's uh, that's my short answer to that. Now, the uh, the, uh, the the approach that we take in our real evolutions is to deliver positive return uh, on the investment you make with us, and that is why uh, I spend uh, all this time and emphasis talking about uh, ROI and about return and about having a plan uh, when you go in. If your website something you need to check off a list and call it done, well, I. The rest of our time together might not be as uh, I want to manage your expectations for the value that you're going to get out of our get out of our time. Uh, we're uh, uh, mastering your message. Is going to move on into our next point. Mastering your message. Uh, let's. Uh, what does that mean? Okay. Uh, it means uh, knowing your competition. It means taking a look at what else is out there. What other people are saying, right? How are they talking about themselves? What vocabulary are they using? Have they positioned themselves uh, in a unique position in the marketplace? Um, usually, they haven't. Uh, especially when we're dealing with uh, uh, small businesses, uh, the stuff that we're talking about, I promise it's available uh, uh, to you and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and can be uh, and can meet your budget, uh, uh, prioritize uh, prioritize the net within your budget. But uh, but are you uh, are you selling the same stuff that everybody else is selling? Are you saying with the the same things? Are your promises believable? We'll talk about more of these things. But do you have a unique market position and do is there anyone in your competition space that gets what you can benchmark 
uh, tactically or qualitatively? Uh, do you have a unique selling proposition? And that has to do with who uh, your product or your service is for, the value proposition that you have, the value that you're providing. A unique selling proposition says we are the only people who can provide you these things. And it's relevant to what the person who's making the purchase decision needs. Uh, uh, and it is immediately or so. So, so what, is, uh, what is your unique selling proposition? And part of knowing your competition is making sure that your selling proposition is in fact unique. Uh, vocabulary. Uh, you don't order a large coffee at Starbucks, right? Uh, you, uh, so uh, they've got their own unique vocabulary. It makes them more memorable and more referable. Uh, and uh, uh, they've got their own uh, way of coming at it. Uh, uh, the vocabulary is not just that brand vocabulary where it's a tall and a grande and a venti. It's also clearly and consistently referring to things across uh, your entire spectrum of communication. Do you have clients or do you have customers? Do you have agents or do you have representatives, et cetera? You know, uh, what are you, you have names for your systems and progress. And frequently what we find is people have good programs and good systems, and if they just named them, and said, here's what comes in the system, and this is how we guarantee this happens, that is key into lifting you above your competition and setting you apart. Uh, 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 branding uh, and clarifying the value that you already bring. Uh, your voice and tone. A couple of points to this. Uh, your uh, clear varying consistency as per standards. Uh, are you serious? Are you funny? Are you sexy? Are you cool? Whatever. Uh, but let's be that uh, consistently throughout on our website content when we're standing you, staring you face to face, when we're talking to you on the phone, when we're leaving a, uh, a one pager behind from somebody who dropped by our, our booth at the trade show, et cetera. Uh, if we do a radio ad, whatever we do, uh, it needs to be in a clear, consistent voice and tone. And part of that is how do we speak to people? Is it in the first person versus third person or is it in the second person? Do we say Webolutions makes great websites or do we say we help you? Uh, be more successful. Now, that's a decision that you make, uh, and uh, uh, and it's different for everyone, but it's the kind of stuff that we help people uh, with, obviously. Uh, emotions. I want to bring this up because if you've watched, uh, uh, there's been a couple of webinars where we've uh, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, and if you've talked with us before, you know how we feel about this. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Simon Sinek uh, has a uh, Start With Why book, and a lot of people have seen his 17-minute TED Talk video, uh, How Great Leader, How Leaders Inspire Action. The reason we like that so much is because it does a great job of explaining how messaging drives behavior. In it, Senate talks about a cross-section of the human brain. He's got his three consistent circles, his golden circles, why, how, what, and his deal is start in the middle and work your way out. We'll talk just a little bit more about that here today. But the reason that works, he mentioned that cross-section of the human brain. We've shown that to you before, uh, and it, 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 it comes to this. You've got a, you've got a reptilian brain, which is, uh, controls all of your involuntary emotions, or your breathing, your flinching, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you've got a neocortex part of your brain, which does all your factin and figuring. Uh, I grew up in the South, so, uh, so uh, it's, uh, it, it does all of your math and your logic, but it has no capacity for language and no capacity for decision-making. Uh, it, ha it has no authority. If we're talking to the decision maker in the human brain, we're talking to the limbic brain, the mammalian brain, our emotional part of our brain. That is where 100% of our decision making capacity is housed, 100%. It controls trust, loyalty, and all of our decisions. Therefore, every decision that we make as humans is an emotional decision. So we want to identify what emotions we want people to associate with our brand um, as we go forth. And we'll talk a little more what we mean about a brand uh, as well. Our attributes. People relate to people. Uh, we assign human attributes to things. Uh, that is, uh, that means uh, uh, our dogs, our cars, right? She's running okay. Uh, my dog is so smart. Uh, we uh, we have uh, uh, there's uh, there's uh, we assign human human attributes or people attributes that we would assign to people uh, to brands and uh, uh, to all things. And so to make us more relatable, let's take those emotions. And say, how would we? If, uh, how would we describe? How would uh, uh, another person? How would we want another person to describe our brand? Are we exuberant? Are we silly? You know. Uh, uh, so, what are our attributes? Uh, it is one thing to make promises; it's another to understand why you should believe them. Uh, so, what are our reasons to believe the brand promises uh, that we make? Let's define them uh, and our supporting rationale for them. So, we've given you reasons, and here are the facts and the meat behind uh, our reasons to believe. All of this comes into things that we might call uh, here at Revolutions a brand platform and it's stuff that we uh, 
that we help our clients uh, that we help our clients uh, uh, define and develop. Okay, now this last bullet point: What do you stand for? That's another thing that we like about the Cynic uh, Simon Cynic video and the Start with White book. Is he makes a really interesting point. Uh, he uh, uh, people don't buy what you do. He says they buy why you do it. Uh, he gives an example of Apple, and his example is that Apple doesn't come to you and say, uh, and say hey, buy our, uh, buy our phone, buy our watch, buy our computer, uh, because lots of other people have those things. Coca-Cola, right, uh, does not come to us and say, hey, our sugar water is delicious and our packaging is really cool. Buy it, please. Uh, uh, Apple leads with, we think differently. Uh, and by the time they get through telling you that they challenge the status quo and how they do it, if you are the type of person who sees yourself as thinking differently, you're gonna buy their stuff no matter what it is, okay? Uh, that's an overstatement, it's overgeneralization, but you kind of get the idea. Coca-Cola, same thing. On the shelf, next to products that are exactly like them for all intents and purposes. I mean, the differences and nuances are pretty, uh, are pretty thin. Uh, but uh, so, uh, and what Coca-Cola does is they say, we refresh the world. We do this by connecting people. We're gonna hold hands, teach the world sing. We're gonna give you Santa Claus, uh, with the invented Santa Claus. We're going to give you a cuddly polar bears at Christmas time. Uh, and we are going to do what all successful brands do, which is form a relationship, an individual relationship between the entity, between you and that entity. They are going to form positive relationships over time between what they stand for and moments of happiness in your life. They're going to make you happy. Auto insurance does this, right? This is how they advertise that commoditized deal by making you laugh, right? They give you something positive. Hershey's chocolate used to show us TV commercials about how cool the chocolate looked when it was swirling around uh, and getting mixed up uh, in, in the bowl. Now the commercials are uh, uh, the chocolate is a vehicle that, oh, that gets the angst-ridden teenage girl out of her room to come connect with her mother over that nasty boy uh, and uh, and talk at a, at a human level uh, and uh, these moments of happiness, okay? So when you look at this, what do you stand for? Okay, look at your website. I'm to look at your website and see if it, if it communicates the thing for which you stand. You started a company or you took an executive position uh, at that nonprofit or whatever your situation is uh, because it aligned with your beliefs. You're leading it somewhere. There's something inside of you that says this works. All right, what is it? What is it? What are those, uh, what are those alignments? Leave some help with that. Uh, we help you define that. Please uh, codify it. Please uh, uh, please uh, let us know. Uh, how your marketing message evolved. This seemed uh, to be, uh, to be a, yeah, uh, there we go. We, uh, we're getting some questions in, but I'm going to run through a couple more slides and, uh, and then answer a few more. Uh, your marketing message, here's how it evolved. So I'm going to tie this uh, a, a little bit of, bow, of a bow uh, around, this, uh, around this topic. Uh, so uh, I mentioned auto insurance. Uh, if you listen to the Geico's and the progressives, the flows, right? Uh, it's all the same. 15 minutes will save you. Uh, uh, it will save you money. All right, we we cost less. That is advertising at a commodity level. That is presenting your product as a commodity. It's all the same. So get it as cheap as possible, right? It's just shopping at Walmart. It's all the same. Come get it cheap. Coffee is the example we use here because I can go right now uh, to buy raw green coffee beans. That'll be a buck and a half if I am willing to pick the beans, take the beans home, store the beans roast the beans, grind the beans, make the coffee, okay? Uh, if I want to do all that, I can get it done for about a fifty-eight a pound. I don't want to do all that. So what I'm more likely to do is when I go to the grocery store uh, at uh, on the weekend, I'm going to buy it at a product level. Someone else has already selected the beans, right? They grew the beans, they picked the best beans, they, uh, they roast them, they grind them up, they put them in a resealable container, and they rent the grocery store space a couple of blocks from my house, and there it is. Uh, and, uh, and so I don't have to do all that other stuff that, uh, that I have to do at a commodity level. I can buy it as a product level and I might pay five, six, seven, eight, nine dollars per pound, depending on how up I am about my coffee, uh, on that particular day. Uh, so that's buying it at a product level. Uh, then do I have to do that? Well, no, I don't have to do that. I can buy, I, I can go to the dyer, uh, and I can sit down and, uh, somebody's going to put uh, for breakfast and somebody's going to put a, uh, a server is going to put, uh, cream and sugar. Uh, in front of me so I can uh, make the coffee taste like whatever I want. And as long as I'm there, they'll make sure that my ceramic cup is, uh, is full of liquid that I drink. Uh, and, uh, and for that service, I pay a premium, right? I've got, and don't do the math. 
on uh, uh, my advice to people is when you go to the diner, just enjoy the coffee. Don't think about how much it costs. It kind of costs a lot of money because I have to pay somebody, right, to deliver that service uh, to you. They have a server uh, who does this, and now you're buying it at a service level, and it costs more money, 80 bucks a pound. Uh, if you do the math, another reason don't do the math, and also don't do it when you go to Starbucks, right? Because this is the punchline. You haven't figured that already. Starbucks has us waiting in line at two o'clock in the afternoon to buy coffee. So if you don't buy coffee, you buy an upside down skinny double shot no foam da 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 da, right? And uh, uh, and uh, and if you go to the same Starbucks, they'll recognize you, and it might be a wink and a nod. You wave your Starbucks card, and they have cool colors, and they have very intentional aromas in their stores, and they have no sharp corners, and they, and they believe in things. You may not like what they believe in or what they stand for, but you can't argue that they stand for things, and they take stands, and they say, here's what we believe, what we stand for in the world, and they changed the world. When Starbucks started, the price of coffee in America was 50 cents. That's what the price of coffee, and coffee consumption was on the decline. Uh, and then along came Starbucks, and they changed the world, and Howard Schultz had to buy it off his business partner in order to be able to do this. He went to him, and he said, hey, I want to do this. The guy said, no, we just sell coffee. He said, we're a commodity. And Schultz said, I want to be an experience, and look what happened, right? Has it been a linear drive? Uh, am I endorsing anybody for president? No, uh, but, uh, but you can't argue with, uh, uh, with those kind of results. All right, so we seem to be aware of where we're off, what our, what our, what our, our website visitor is looking for, and where our messaging says we are, and where we think we ought to be uh, in that uh, uh, in that uh, continuum. All right, that's the evolution of all uh, marketing messages. The next point here, uh, yeah, I'm getting to questions here pretty quick. I promise, guys. Uh, uh, oh, is uh, uh, your website visitor? Let's make it easy for these people who are represented in this big giant head. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, uh, let's understand what they're coming uh, to us for, right? Uh, there uh, and we are going to reverse engineer the journey. I should have waited to put that uh, last bullet point up because that's the punchline. Uh, but uh, but let's understand what they're coming to us for and what uh, what we are going to uh, 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 and where we need to meet them. Okay. Uh, an example of this, I think, uh, is uh, that we've done very well uh, is at myswingle.com. M Y S W I N G L E. Myswingle. Dot com. Uh, Swingle is one of the larger regional landscape providers. They were a lawn uh, and tree care company, uh, and they do some other things. Uh, the lawn, the, that, that, that business here in Colorado starts in March and it ends in October, and there ain't nothing on the other end of it. Uh, so they've got some things that they do uh, otherwise. And if you go to that website, you will see that you can select your journey uh, on the website by product, or by service, rather, would be a better way to put it. Uh, by, I'm here for lawn care. I'm here, I want information on tree care. If you scroll a little bit down the page, you'll see seasons uh, pop out. Why do we do that? Because we've worked with the client to reverse engineer the client journey. We did persona development. We understand who these people are. Uh, we did that from their business acumen, from their history, and what the search volume and, and, uh, and information that we, cre that we uh, created and worked with them to understand. Uh, and, uh, and we created that, uh, uh, that journey because we understood that people were, when they got there, the mindset was, I either need help with this, or here's where I am, and I don't know what it is, but uh, I, uh, uh, my lawn looks like this, and it's this time of year. And my trees look like this, and it's this time of year. This was A, this was B, okay? Uh, uh, and that took about uh, care of about 90% of the traffic, uh, like 70 and 20, of the, of the amount of traffic that, uh, that, that, that was coming. They were in that mindset, and uh, uh, that website has uh, converted well uh, in large part because that's uh, how we did it. So we understood this. You should understand this as well. Uh, when you are looking to improve performance of your website or when you're doing to, uh, things to, uh, to, uh, to uh, when you're getting ready to build, uh, build your own. Uh, all right. Okay, I'm going to show you this, uh, and I'm not going to talk uh, too much about it. We have plenty of time, but we're going to probably end a little early here. Uh, but, uh, but this, next month's webinar is about Google Analytics and how it, can, uh, how, uh, uh, how it helps. Uh, the... Uh, 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 the email that we'll send following the webinar, uh, this webinar, will have a registration link to that. Uh, we're also going to ask you to go ahead and sign up today if you want, uh, but it's a, uh, and we always recommend doing so, get it on your calendar. Uh, it is, uh, we're going to dive deeper into Google Analytics and what it can, and how it can help you achieve your goals. Uh, this, this, uh, uh, just today, I wanted to show you this uh, because this is part of understanding what your visitor wants. This is uh, from Google Analytics, and it is a behavior flow. What we're seeing here, running left to right across your screen, 
is how a visitor views a website. This is an actual uh, uh, example of uh, one of our uh, clients from whom we built a website. We're looking for a couple things here, uh, but the main thing that we're looking for is uh, we're looking mainly a successful uh, information flow that is trafficking the visitor through the journey that they want and towards the conclusion that we want and where it's breaking or is the other end of that, right? Uh, so uh, we're seeing where people exit, uh, where people in the aggregate, where they, uh, where they enter and how they progress through the website. Should not design a new website uh, or, or uh, uh, without looking at, at how your current website is performing at this level, not just overall, uh, but digging in deep and saying, where is it working, where is it not? If, it's, if there's an information flow that's working, let's make sure we maintain it, right? Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, we're going to, uh, uh, so and more on this kind of stuff uh, next month, but it is a deal. We're like, right now, if you've got Google Analytics installed in your website, conceivably, you can go into your Google Analytics, you can go into your Google Analytics to find a time frame uh, that uh, uh, that you want to look at, uh, uh, that you want to examine, uh, and see how people are, are viewing your website. Now, one of the other next things I'm going to talk about uh, is uh, is the right technology. And if you're working with the right website platform, knowing stuff like that might be as easy as moving around your content areas, changing your menu items. But I'll talk a little bit more about that. This slide, okay, y'all. Even for a marketing agency that has all these answers, right, and can tell you in theory how all this stuff works and give you examples of how we put this into practice and the results that we generate and all that stuff. It's hard for everybody to talk about themselves and to be succinct in that. If I'd had more time, I would have written a shorter letter, Mark Twain. Uh, we, uh, uh, and so I, uh, I have a client. We have a client, uh, Meredith Myers. If you're looking for a, a business coach, I have one to recommend. Her name is Meredith Myers. Uh, and she, uh, before she was a business coach, she worked with us for a larger nonprofit organization. And, uh, and we had some uh, rather big goals. And the stuff that's highlighted here, uh, and uh, I forget what color that is, Jack, but it's in our brand portfolio. Uh, it's, uh, there's very specific RGBs and so forth that, uh, that Jack's trained me to use. Uh, and uh, and uh, the, the stuff that's highlighted there is what I mean. There is a big difference. When you look at your website, I want you to be honest about, uh, uh, about is this doing what it uh, is this doing this? Uh, how to generate more leads? Is our messaging doing so? Are we telling people what they think they ought to know and we want them to hear, or are we meeting them where they are and pulling them in? Okay, uh, and, uh, and and uh, and so Meredith said that uh, a lot better, I think, uh, uh, than I uh, ever could. And so I just uh, I wanted to share this with you in terms of your website messaging. Okay, I'm going to leave that up there because it's a lot of words, and I am, as promised, going to talk some of these questions that have come in. And thank you all so much uh, for submitting them. Here's the first question. How do I know <clears throat> how do I know how my website visitor wants to process information? Great question. Okay. Uh, so I talked about market positioning before. One of the first things that we do in market positioning is clearly define your target personas. All right. Now what a target persona is, is these are people around whom you want to build your business. These are new customers, these are people you need to understand uh, of what has changed in their lives. Uh, to be uh, making the Google search or to ask a friend about how they're going to get this problem solved. Uh, uh, what is their decision-making process? Uh, and uh, uh, demographics and psychographics are also included in that, but it's important to understand that demographics and psychographics and occupation and income and education level and that kind of stuff is good to know, and it's important, and it'll help us craft things like what colors to put on the website and what level to speak at, whether they want to be first person or third person or second person, you know what I mean, uh, and, uh, and so forth. But, uh, uh, but it's, uh, none of us have ever made a purchase decision because we fit into a demographic. None of us have ever done that. Nobody's going to do it for you. So it's a good place to start. You need to keep going, all right, uh, and uh, define these things uh, more uh, in more detail and understand how they're going to make their uh, the decision-making process. You have these people in your inventory. Most of you uh, who have been, I've seen who's on the webinar, a lot of you have, uh, have uh, a history of this. You have, uh, you've been in business for a while. If you're keeping good records, or even if you've got it in your head, you've said, well, if we had 10 or 20 of those, we could take a lot of pressure off of advertising because we would have fewer, we have less uh, churn, uh, uh, fewer, lesser turnover. Uh, we'd be generating more referrals because that's what these people do. Meredith is an example of somebody who, uh, who has referred a lot of business to us. 
after having done business with us uh, uh, for a client. She's moved on. She's brought us other people. Uh, boy, if we had a lot, of, if we had a, a, a ton of merit, this uh, we'd be growing a lot, a lot <laughs> even faster, uh, kind of thing. So that's how I coach people, if you will, uh, to think about uh, to think about those kind of things. And you have to understand where they are. You've got it in your in your in your acumen, which should not be discounted. All right. Uh, and then the other, the, uh, the, the digital uh, uh, stuff that we looked at, like the behavior flow, uh, search volume of keywords uh, overall, uh, we can pull information from that as well. Uh, and that uh, to get uh, perspective and data, data driven recommendations. Uh, um, okay. This is a question. It's, uh, okay, I think we've got time, so I'm going to answer it. It's a little bit outside of the scope, uh, but it is something that we've talked about in previous webinars. Uh, and I mentioned it here. I mentioned SEO here, search engine optimization, and get, which is getting your website to score uh, for certain from page one, if you will, uh, for certain keywords, and using that as a way to uh, draw people into your website. And uh, uh, this question is a little bit out of context, but I'm going to take it anyway. I've been told by other companies that you build the website and then worry about SEO. Why do you do it the other way around? Revolutions, we do it the other way around. Okay, uh, the reason not to do it. Uh, is uh, uh, if you read what Google says in best practices, uh, they have said for years they are going to minimize the, uh, the weight behind uh, keywords in the URL, uh, behind, uh, uh, behind putting keywords uh, into your actual uh, uh, web address, right, into your file plan. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. The, the Internet, the file directory, that's all it is. Uh, your website is a collection of files. Your web page is a file. Uh, Google indexes your website, and just like in the back of the book, it says this term is on page 38. Google's looking for your website, that your web page should be on that page 38. If you move it or you change that URL or anything about it, that's where you get 404 file not found errors. You don't want any of those, right? But when we do this, uh, uh, so but, and Google has for years been saying that you could put keywords in the URL, but we are going to devalue them. And year after year, we've been waiting for them to try to find a way to do it, and we've been testing it, and it doesn't happen. So, uh, so uh, uh, there is value in doing it. It is the only way to fully optimize your your website uh, to app to to maximize its marketability to the search engines. When you don't do it, uh, that you save money uh, on the upfront. Uh, and uh, and you cost yourself money every day after you make that decision. Flip side of that is uh, it's more money to do it on the upfront to uh, uh, but you come out of it with a full blown uh, on site optimization plan. You know exactly what terms you need to target, uh, and uh, and your website is built to maximize its marketability. It's a, it's a, its ability to achieve uh, uh, your maximum rankings uh, uh, with it. And the short answer to all that, after I give the very long answer, the short answer is it's different between being book smart and street smart. The book says this. Reality says this. You have to constantly test these things if you're going to be successful in the world, just like you do in your business. Uh, we do it in our business. That's an example of it. Uh, the, uh, I'll take one more question, and then we'll move on um, to the next, uh, to talk about the right technology. Great question. Are you saying that in order to be successful, I have to be Starbucks? No. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, we just need to understand where we are in the evolution uh, of that messaging and where we're going and how to get there uh, and be honest about things like in order to get there, uh, what uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, what strengths do we have that we can leverage, what strengths do we have that we need to develop, uh, what do we need to understand about uh, about the world and our place in it. Uh, that's all it really says. Okay, let's be honest about where we are and where we can get and where we need to be, what our customers or our clients or our prospective clients uh, in this case are looking for from us, all right? We understand this. Our websites will perform better, and we'll do what the webinar promised to tell you. We will generate more leads from the traffic that we are earning, okay? I hope that's clear. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but that's a great question. Uh, all right. Uh, let's talk about getting the right technology. And uh, we're still getting some more questions, and it looks like we're going to have time uh, to cover some at the end. So keep coming. Appreciate it. Uh, getting the right technology, what do I mean? Okay, mobile-friendly. Okay, so almost nobody who's going to build you a website, whether it's your cousin who's doing it in his basement or uh, a firm with a lot of experience like uh, with uh, and, and experts on file on staff uh, like Webolutions, uh, is going to any website that you build is going to be mobile friendly. Now, what does that mean exactly? Okay, uh, people say my website's mobile friendly because it understands when I look at it on a smartphone, uh, it shrinks down and I can see it on the page. 
Well, what is your website? This is a slide we talked about earlier about what uh, uh, understand what your what your visitor came here to do. Let's say the visitor came there to read an article, uh, to get information. They want to read an article, and okay, your website, uh, your content on your website comes down to it fits on the mobile screen, uh, but it fits by shrinking everything down. And now the text is little bitty, and uh, and uh, there's no good way to read it. That's not a mobile friendly site. All right, that's not a mobile friendly user experience. Also want to point out, when you add custom functionality to your website, the website itself is probably natively designed to be mobile friendly, but that custom functionality may not be. Okay, So when you add uh, a WordPress plugin, when you add some custom functionality, when you want the website to do something, you need to make sure that it renders out and provides a good experience for the mobile user. Um, uh, we've got uh, clients in real estate, for example, which have uh, calculators to help you figure out what your mortgage payment might be. Uh, uh, well, those kind of things. There's a whole other discussion to have, be had about what that needs to be doing on your website, whether it belongs there, right? whether that's helping you achieve your goals. But if you put it there, let's make sure that the, uh, that the experience is good for the way that we consume things uh, on these devices. And by the way, statistically speaking, only about 50% of the traffic and about 40% or fewer of B2B consultation conversions come off of a mobile device. Uh, those tend to come much more often when I'm sitting in a desktop and I have all 10 fingers and I'm thinking about these things, especially for those of us who do business in the areas that have dollar signs with commas uh, associated with them. Uh, that is a deliberate decision. That comes in the form of a phone call or, uh, or a 10 fingertip uh, submission. Uh, but uh, but a significant chunk of first impressions are made on mobile. 70 to 80% depending on how you measure it. The first time I see you, it's on that device. And if it's, it's, it's a simple qualifier, and it's really that simple. People decide whether or not they like your website in a matter of a few seconds. And if somebody's thinking about you, and the first time they hear about you is on the 10th tee, or at the bar, or at the restaurant, or walking the dogs with the rest of the, uh, with the, rest of the group, or the 5K people, or whatever, this is going to be their first impression of you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, so let's make sure that everything on that site is designed and developed and tested to provide an optimal experience for the mobile user. Okay, that's what mobile friendly is. Content management systems, Drupal, Joomla, uh, WordPress kind of won this out. About one third of the uh, internet is now powered uh, by WordPress. Uh, once upon a time, uh, if you wanted to change a typo on the website, you had to get in line. Everybody else wanted a website programmer uh, to change the content on theirs. Now. Uh, you can, with proper training, uh, which we always provide as standard part of our websites, uh, we, we don't let you out the room unless you've been trained on how to use it, uh, is the short way I say that. Uh, but uh, you have a content management system. And these things allow you to do some of the things I alluded to before. Uh, if you can work in Microsoft Word, you can work in WordPress. You know, you can make, uh, you can bold, you can structure your content, you can say, here's my header tag, you can structure your content, you can add pictures, you can move stuff around uh, on the page. You can also, with just a little bit of training, uh, do some things that uh, enable you to do those things I was talking about earlier. Move menu items. All right, we figured out that this is our. Oh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, uh, we move menu items, uh, uh, content areas that are just like drag and drop. I want to move this stuff around. I want to change the appearance of it. Uh, it gets easy to do. Uh, and then, if you work with a good partner, we can talk about whether you should uh, be doing that or not, and what kind of things you could do. And I'll talk in a little bit about why. Uh, you would want to do those kinds of things to help your website conversion rate to turn uh, those uh, those website visitors uh, into leads. I talked a little bit about plugins, right? So WordPress is a software system, and there's other pieces of software. And the way that WordPress and Joomla and Drupal work uh, is uh, it's powered by these plugins, which are pre pre built uh, pieces of software that go in your website, and they provide this kind of functionality. And some of them are free, and some of them cost money. Some of them are plug and play, good to go, and usually they need to be designed a little bit to uh, be consistent with the look and the feel and the user experience of your website for your uh, for your users. So that's what I mean by selection and customization of plugins. Not all plugins are created equal. Uh, just because a plugin does this doesn't mean you should install it on your website. We qualify uh, the plugins that we use uh, in our website in our enhanced WordPress platform uh, for uh, uh, to go with our performance performance by design approach. And they, how many people have downloaded this? How long has this been uh, been in use? What's their record of, uh, of performance? Do they have good reviews? How many of them uh, are there? And we can look and see, do they update their software uh, on a regular basis to be 
compatible with the soft with the well working WordPress software that also needs to get updated. Why do you update that? For the hackers, all right? And that's why we are, your hosting and maintenance solution also fact, uh, factors into this. Uh, it's a little bit outside of scope, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But the way your website gets hacked more often than not, uh, and any concerns, and I'm just going to go ahead and address this. We got some some questions coming in about WordPress uh, security. WordPress gets targeted because it's 33% of the internet. If you're going to target something, you're going to target the thing that's going to hurt the most, right? If you're a hacker uh, or a, a malicious person, and that's what you do, uh, it, it gets targeted. Uh, if your software is up to date, you probably don't have anything to worry about, okay? Uh, so the websites that we produce and that we host and maintain are on a schedule to keep those updated. Uh, I probably told this story before here on these webinars, but one of the first uh, web, uh, when I was a marketing consultant in 2009 before joining uh, Webolutions, my buddy built me, uh, the guy that was on my team, the freelancer, did an excellent job, uh, built me a WordPress website. And I loved it. And I logged on one day to write a blog post, and there was a stick friendly button that said, hey, Time to update your uh, time to update your WordPress software version. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, and I clicked the button and I updated my software version and broke my website. Nothing worked anymore. It looked terrible on all this. And I called my developer and he said, "Yeah, don't do that." He said, "Let me do that." Uh, it is uh, uh, what happened is you updated the software version of WordPress and these plugins that are powering the given the functionality of your website. They weren't ready. Okay, they need to be updated to work with the new version of software before you update this, and there's all kinds of stuff that goes on. Uh, so, and we have a technical systems manager that handles that. Uh, so that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge. That, and if you don't update your uh, your plugins, that's the most likely entry point uh, for a hacker. Okay, the reason we update those, the reason that those software uh, things get updated is for security. Uh, third party integrations. Very quickly, uh, uh, we're going to talk more about this, but third party integrations uh, may include chat. Or you may have an SMS uh, program, uh, uh, things that so when somebody arrives on your site, uh, we've all seen this, uh, there, uh, uh, so a little window pops up and says, uh, hey, you can, you can, uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. And the user experience and the expectation uh, of, uh, of the website owner is not always in line uh, about what you expect to happen with chat, so it's important to think through the process. Uh, but before you establish those things, but it's a good example of a third-party integration that might help uh, uh, convert more visitors and leaders on your website. Oops. Uh, yep. Okay. Good. Uh, conversion funnels. I want to talk about these as well. Okay. Uh, and this is something that Jack and I spent a lot of time on uh, for uh, here, actually. Okay. Uh, our uh, our uh, what's a conversion funnel? Um, uh, so if you looked in your Google Analytics, and more on this next month. And you see, here are the most visited pages, or our top entrance pages, okay? Or maybe you look at your best service lines, or your best product lines, the ones that have the highest margin, or generate the most engagement, uh, or the most cross-sell or upsell. When people buy this, they buy other things. This is also a conversation that we have with our clients when we're putting together their keyword strategy for search engine optimization. But I won't go into that today. Uh, we're, uh, uh, so you figure those things out. All right, you have a compelling offer, right? And uh, and uh, so on those pages, you're going to put an offer. You go to our website, you're going to go. Uh, our, our most visited pages have an offer, right? Talk to an expert. Uh, and so when you're ready, you can schedule an appointment with somebody here. Might be me uh, to uh, to talk about your goals, the problem that you're having, the thing you need to solve, uh, building a new website, whatever it is, uh, an evaluation of your current website. We do that for free. Uh, so, uh, and that's why it says that along the bottom of your screen there. Uh, so, uh, so but have a compelling offer placement. Where is it placed on the page, right? Uh, uh, is it once, is it twice, uh, uh, and, uh, and where is it uh, most optimally uh, placed? So if I, uh, what's the call to action? Um, the default call to action for most uh, uh, website forms, I'm going to mention the website form thing yeah, right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I'm going to talk about it next in landing pages. Okay. okay. So the next thing we talk about is landing pages, and I'll mention it then. Okay. Uh, but your call to action, the default when you uh, the, the 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 default action is submit. I want you to think for a minute about how you feel about being asked to submit. Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, there's there's all kinds of data, uh, consumer data, digital and otherwise, which says that people like to get things. And they like to get things for free. Uh, also, the way 
that we read things increasingly anymore uh, is we look at the front and we look at the back. So if you want to start somewhere, where I always suggest is tell me what I get and then tell me it's free, okay, if you can get there, right? Uh, free always outperforms a percent off. Nobody likes to do math or to read anymore, uh, but uh, or, or so it seems. So uh, having a call to action, testing the call to action, there's probably not one right answer, and it shouldn't be your opinion versus my opinion. It should be one that the data decides. So one thing that you can do is A-B test your website. A, B, test your calls to action. Measure, measure, measure. Uh, we'll talk about landing pages next. All right, let's do this now. Uh, all right, so before I forget, I tell you what. Here's what I, I'll put this up here. I'll just go ahead and build out the slide. Um, yep, okay. Uh, and the last thing is, the la that last point, what you measure, you achieve. If you're not measuring it, you're not likely to achieve it. Uh, and uh, last month, by the way, uh, well, our webinar was all about effective data, choosing effect and analyzing effective data. So that will be, uh, you'll have an opportunity to be a link to all our past webinars and our follow-up, uh, and, uh, and it ties, uh, ties into this. And again, uh, tune in next month uh, because we're going to de dive deeper into Google Analytics and that free tool uh, and, uh, and, how it can, uh, and how it can help you. So one thing that I left out here about landing pages or any forms that are on your website is to test the forms, okay? You may have operational systems which mandate certain uh, and third-party integrations which mandate if this is going to go smoothly and I'm going to collect this information and put it into my contact relationship management system, my CRM, or my accounting system, or whatever it is that's going into, I have to have this information. It may include a credit card number. Uh, it may, uh, uh, it, I get nervous handling credit card numbers. Uh, but it may include, uh, it probably includes a name and an uh, email address, whatever it is. Um, one of the things that we'd like to test, that we strongly advise testing, is how little information must you get to get what you want. All right, the less you require of somebody, the more likely you are to get what you want. Uh, so uh, uh, name, phone number, email, title, uh, job title, uh, 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 where you work. Do you need all this information to generate the conversion that you want? Uh, and we always start with, uh, uh, with minimizing the amount of information, uh, minimizing the amount of stuff that we require uh, on the upfront to get the opportunity to talk <clears throat> and then launch the relationship. Uh, uh, but, uh, but a good thing to do is to test that uh, against other form fields, right? And that's what that A-B and multivariate testing. A-B is just this versus this. Multivariate testing is more sophisticated, more expensive uh, uh, deal where it's a whole bunch of variables uh, and programs to kick out and say, okay, based on uh, all this data, here's the optimal, uh, here's the optimal stuff. But most of our uh, uh, people that are on the webinar or watching the webinar today are uh, small businesses or nonprofits. Uh, this is equally, uh, I assure you, this is equally uh, uh, relevant uh, to all of you. Uh, and so these and the rest of these things are really uh, important points for landing pages. Jack's looking at me. We're getting down to time. Uh, we are, uh, uh, so some additional conversion strategies that I want to make sure we cover. Uh, retargeting. Um, get the pixel on your website. Uh, that means you have to have an account with a Facebook and or a Google and or an ad roll. Uh, and get a pixel and put it on your put it on your website. Do this even if you don't think you're going to be uh, doing any display advertising. And no matter how you feel uh, about being followed around uh, about shoes that you said you might have wanted six months ago, uh, the uh, uh, retargeting is effective. Uh, we get we 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 see four or five thousand brand impressions per day every day. We fight the fires at our feet. We are experts at information triage. We chop 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 until we get down to whatever is right in front of us. You need to stay in front of people. If somebody's been to your website before, they've heard of you, uh, they are considering you, uh, and, and retargeting is a good way to stay in front of them uh, for that. Uh, heat maps is on here, uh, and that won the visual spot in our, uh, in our slide because it's simply the most visually interesting of all these things that I talk about. Uh, predictive marketing analytics and anonymous visitor tracking. Uh, I would only recommend that for B2B. Uh, and I don't have time to give you the use case for it, but, uh, uh, but uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's letting you know who, what companies, businesses are on your website, um, even if they don't contact you. So that's good information uh, for, uh, and it seemed to fit uh, the title of the webinar. So I wanted to make sure we brought it up. And it is within our suite of services uh, that we also include into the website strategies uh, that we help our clients build. Uh, conversion testing, I talked about that, and direct calls to action. 80% of the people who come to your website aren't ready to convert right now. 
Uh, they are doing research. And they'll come back to you when they're ready. Uh, but in the meantime, how are you going to stay in front of them? Retargeting is one way. Uh, all these, uh, this is an example of, uh, of practicing what we preach, I guess, but ebooks that I'm constantly offering here, right? Uh, uh, ebooks are a way uh, to stay in front. Uh, you're, you're, you're uh, put valuable information in your monthly e newsletter. Uh, don't make it a pitch. Go say, here's some information that you can use, all right? Let that define who you are and what you stand for and how you help people, all right? but indirect calls to action. I'm not ready to talk to you today, Mike, but I would like to subscribe to your e-newsletter because someday I might be, and the information that you're providing here uh, in terms of uh, 25 things that every small business or every nonprofit should automate, or the seven tips of building a more effective website, high-performing website, that I can consume uh, and, uh, and evaluate you on and get back to you when I need more information, all right? Sierra Marketing Automation, uh, I wanna talk about that real quick. We are at time, I'm gonna blast through this. I talk about it every month. Uh, this is uh, this is what it does. All right. So right now, I know some of you are using Constant Contact, right? Uh, and you may have a CRM system. Uh, most of you don't. Uh, your uh, CRM meaning how do you organize your contacts? Some of you are using Excel. Uh, some of you are using the email program. Uh, just about all of you have been in the situation where uh, it's eight o'clock at night uh, and uh, or nine o'clock at night, and you got to go home and you're tired, and you've done everything that there is to do except for get the e-newsletter out, and the deadline for that is tomorrow. It's got to go. Uh, and uh, you look and you say, hey, the website did a pretty good job. We got 50 new subscribers uh, last month. That's great. Uh, I need to upload these guys, uh, download them into a CSV file, because that's what my other uh, provider uh, uses for a bulk upload, and I need to put it in the format that, uh, that, that it's supposed to be in, and then I need to upload it, and that didn't work, because somewhere in here there's a comma, or an extra character or a space somewhere in this 50 lines of data, eight column thing uh, uh, that I got to go find out. Well, I'm not going home at nine tonight, right? I got to stay here until I figure this out. Stop it, all right? Uh, 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 CRM and marketing automation is table stakes anymore for small businesses and marketing. It is no longer the purview of the enterprise. Uh, the, uh, the price points have died, uh, have come down. Uh, and if you call us uh, and mention this webinar, uh, we can, uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, we'll do the loss leader thing and help you negotiate. We'll negotiate for you uh, an upfront rate uh, uh, for uh, for a discount, a very healthy discount uh, of the first three months of those things. We'll help you through uh, all of those things. But these are all the reasons that we use CRM and marketing automation. So let's say that the, 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 we, we promised in the webinar we're going to help you turn website visitors into sales leads. It's not a sales lead once you've gotten the conversion. You have to qualify that prospect. Can they afford you? Do they want? Are they? Uh, uh, is it the right thing uh, for you? Do you provide? Can you give them good value uh, in this? And uh, and are they? Uh, uh, and is it an actual person uh, with an actual need? Uh, all of this, and then there's a whole deal, right? We've gone to uh, into it previously about the timing uh, and the decay of the quality of the lead over time. Uh, 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 CRM marketing automation available now for small businesses at your level. Uh, is uh, helps you with all of these things. Uh, and once the website has converted, this is going to help you uh, actually turn those into sales leads and have a bit more money. Thank you very much for joining me today, uh, joining us today, uh, and uh, join us next month. Uh, we're going to try to bring in some of our walks uh, uh, that work here, uh, our very intelligent uh, 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 guys who actually meditate on this stuff. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, uh, about uh, Google Analytics, uh, our experts from uh, uh, from the digital advertising and search engine optimization, the guys who are Google who actually are Google Analytics certified. I can't promise it, but I'm going to try to get them here for like a a, a panel discussion where we'll have some Q and A uh, with you uh, and cover some of those things. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I've gone a little bit over time. I do apologize. Thanks for staying with me uh, through all of this. I hope it was good uh, for you. If we can help, uh, give me a call. Three zero three. 300-2640, or shoot us an email at info at webolutions.com. My name is Mike Hanbury, my colleague Jack Schneider and I. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day, uh, and a happy safe 4th of July. Hey, great. Uh, God bless America. Thank you, everybody. Good night.